recording in Pro Tools using Logic, Digital Performer, Cubase, Nuendo, Reason, or Ableton Live? Let us mix your project today. We will give your songs a sound that rivals today's hottest acts. Visit eneonicity.com for more details. Welcome to Lesson 7. In this lesson, we will discuss Bounce to Disc. Bounce to Disc is a crucial function in Pro Tools for getting your two-track mix at the mixdown stage. It is also a useful tool when comping tracks. When performing a Bounce to Disc, the following are included in the final result. Your audio, your mix settings, automation, and your inserts and sends. Bounce to Disc can be found in the File menu. You can also hit Apple Option B. In the Bounce menu, you have your Bounce options. The first one is the Bounce Source. By default with your Mbox 1 or 2, it'll be Analog 1 and 2. If you have a Digi 002, you have the opportunity to choose any one of the stereo pairs or any one of the individual mono tracks. As you can see here, you can also bounce down from your mono sources or one of the bus channels. Next is your file type. SD2 stands for Sound Designer 2, which is a proprietary digit design file type. It is what's most commonly used for Pro Tools files. WAV stands for WAV files, which is a file type that originated with Windows. For some, this is the preferred file type to use if you are working with other Pro Tools users who use the PC. AIFF is a native Mac format, which is also very popular. And you have MP3. However, with Pro Tools to bounce to an MP3 would require additional software which can be purchased from DigiDesign. There is also the QuickTime format, and then there is Sound Resource, which is normally used to make alert sounds in the Mac. Next is your format. There is Mono, which is a single track that is the summed result of the left and right channels. Multiple Mono is the file format you'll want to choose if you want to re-import your bounce back into Pro Tools. And finally, there's Stereo Interleaved, which is necessary if you're going to be bouncing down to a track that will be used on a CD. Next is your sample resolution. You have three choices for resolution, 8-bit, 16-bit, or 24-bit. 16-bit is the best choice if you're going to be bouncing down to a stereo track used on a CD. 24-bit is preferred if you're going to be bouncing down to a track that will still be included in Pro Tools. Next is your sample rate. 44.1 is commonly used with CDs. 48 is usually used for television. 88.2 is double the rate of 44.1, but is not a very common sample rate used. 96 is the rate most used for high-end audio, and is also the resolution for DVD mastering. 176.4 and 192 are the highest sample rates available, but in my experience, neither are commonly used. The highest most people will go is usually 96. For most musical applications, I have found most useful a 24-bit resolution with a sample rate of 44.1. However, if you have a lot of processor work going on, you might want to use Convert After Bounce. In this situation, if your file type is WAV, your format is multiple mono, your resolution and sample rate are the same as the session, you have an option to Import After Bounce. If this option is checked, a new file will be created in your Pro Tools session that will include your new bounced track. So what we're going to do is perform a bounce with the source of analog 1 and 2. The file type will be WAVE, and we're going to do a multiple mono, so you can see the result in the sequence. Our resolution will be 24, and our sample rate is 44.1. Pressing Enter or enabling the Bounce button, Pro Tools will ask you where you want to save the bounce. In this case, we're going to include it in the audio files. Since we're going to use this file in our session, it's best to put it in the audio files of this particular session. Give it a name and press save. And in real time, Pro Tools does the bounce. Unfortunately, at this time, all bounces must be done in real time in Pro Tools. look in the audio region section, you'll see our bounced track. Now if we want to put that into the session, we'll create a new track, one stereo audio track. 
Next, we can name the track. And then using grid mode, we can drag it into the session. And this concludes Lesson 7.